Hi, I'm Steele, the Vice President of Kilgore International. We're going to show you today how to use your student kit type it on and how that functions with the Darwin Simulator. This is your Darwin Sim. And the way it's going to function is on a magnetic system. You have your upper plate and your lower plate. So when I'm engaging the Typodon, you'll see here, these are your Darwin plates. This is your oral cavity cover, which will collect your water and drain out the back. We'll show that here in a little bit. But what I'm trying to do is engage these two pins into these two pins. And pretty soon you'll be able to do it just by muscle memory. But for this portion here, what I always recommend is keep the model occluded when going in for engagement. So when you go ahead and you snap in the model, you'll hear it click. Now I'm locked in. I let the lower jaw fall. We're sitting right there, um, perfectly engaging the system. And this is where you want to be. Now, when it comes to the moving the head, you could of course grab and try to move it, but over time, that mount is going to give out. So what we want to do anytime we move the mannequin head, we want to rotate this lever here up and you can move it any which way you need to, you know, up, back, side to side, get in the position that you desire and go ahead and lock it down. And now we're tight in this position. We're locked in. Now, if you find yourself in a situation where this handle is running into the back of the headrest, or it's running up in the ear and you have trouble you know, disengaging it to loosen it or tighten it, I would just recommend loosening it a little bit. And this is a pop lever. So you could you know, pop it, pull it straight up, and then reposition and you'll hear it lock. And then you can go ahead and readjust. So get in the position you desire, lock it in, and then you kind of move on from there. Now what we're gonna talk about is the model disengagement portion so when you are ready to remove this model, don't grab it from the upper arch and just pull it out. You don't even need to pull it from the lower arch and then try to remove it. It's really very simple. All you have to do, there's a little portion here for your fingers to be placed to flip open the top portion of the head, right? This is all magnetic. So flip open the top portion of the head, let it rest. You'll see this ejector pin right here. Simple press right here. You press the model out, notice how it's staying on the lower magnet. That is intentional, that way the model doesn't fall to the left or the right. If you are engaged properly, it will stay on here like this. Go ahead and remove the model. So again, just very quickly, we are engaging the model by keeping everything occluded. We are locking it into the Darwin Sim. Then we let the lower jaw fall, completely locked in. When you're ready for removal, Top portion of the head flips open, you expose the ejector pin, press a button, model comes right out, you're ready to move on. The next portion here is going to be geared more towards the faculty, but it's going to be how the water connection, how it evacuates through the oral cavity cover. So we have this extension piece back here, and it's up to your discretion if you would like to clip that piece or not. If you, want, if you clip that piece, then you could easily hook it in to this ADEC portion here in the back, and that'll actually drain your water. Now, what I do recommend, whether it's through a distributor or through Amazon, uh, you could buy a saliva ejector. It's very inexpensive. You could put that in the back of here and have it kind of flush with the oral cavity cover, and then you could uh, then connect those two pieces uh, back here. It's a, it creates an easier workaround with this, uh, with this DP articulator. But as you can see, I'll, I'll disengage the model real quick. And I'll show you here that you'll want that uh, either the saliva ejector or the piece you use here from ADAC, whichever one you're going to connect into, you want to kind of flush with that hole in the back of the oral cavity cover. And you'll be able to see that there. It will drain the water perfectly fine. And uh, it's just a very easy connection. The other option, too, is if you want the students to practice their evac skills, then you could simply put a paper clip back here and that'll collect water just fine, and then you can evac it through a cavity cover that way as well. So two different options. Question we get quite often from the Darwin Sim is how do we know if the model is calibrated? In other words, how do we know that we're getting a consistent opening each time? 
And it's a great question. The way we kind of solve that here is if this magnet, the bottom magnet is flush with this metal plate, meaning they are completely engaged with each other like they are right now, you are calibrated into a standard opening. Now it's up to you in your discretion if you want to have uh, more of a challenge, maybe you're dealing with a more of a challenging patient and you want to decrease the opening and get some practice doing that. So you unscrew this black knob back here, make sure the type on is pulled away so it's easier to move this portion up and down. And now I'm gonna tighten it down right here and it's gonna give us much less of an opening, right? So a little more challenging, you'll see that we're not flush on this plate anymore, um, which is intentional, of course. And uh, again, it's just creating a little more of a challenging opening. You can kind of adjust that if you want a little bit wider than this even, or if you want the widest opening possible, just again, you adjust this uh, black adjusting knob here at the bottom, bring this portion all the way down, it will stop, tighten it down, and we have the widest opening possible. Otherwise, if you just want to be, uh, have a, calibrate your engagement with the model to get a standard opening, I recommend keeping this portion loose and then adjusting it and when you're flush upon this magnet, then of course tighten it down, you're in the correct position, the standard position that we recommend. Now we're gonna talk about the rubber cheek sheet that came with your Darwin SIM. It's the faculty's discretion if they wanna use this or not, but we'll show you how to put it on uh, just in case you need to use it. And I do think it's a great protector for your old cavity cover. So remember to engage. We're trying to engage these top two pins here. I'm keeping the model occluded. So I'm gonna lock in the top portion first. You hear it locked in. Now I'm gonna let the lower jaw fall. We're ready to go. Everything's engaged and tight right here. So now we have your rubber cheek sheet. We're gonna loop this around the ear, okay? And then we're going to connect these four holes into these rubber dam pins. So you have one, two, three. I know it's be hard to see back here, but there's a fourth one. And then we're gonna hook it on the other ear. So you have the two ears engaged, these four rubber dam pins. Remember the lower magnet is weaker than the top. So number one, you can check occlusion. And number two, it's easier to put your uh, rubber cheek sheet on the lower magnet. So this portion here, you will loop around the lower magnet, just like that. I kind of pull out on the, on the rubber cheek sheet a little bit, let it sit here. One important thing to remember, this is made of latex. So um, if you have any latex allergies, you want to make sure you're gloved uh, for this particular exercise or anytime you're engaged with the rubber cheek sheet. What I do like about this though is that you'll notice it protects your oral cavity cover, so you protect your investment a little bit, and also makes the lips and cheeks just a little more taut. So, you know, we talked about earlier how the oral cavity cover is very stretchy. Um, this will eliminate a lot of that stretch and just make it a little more realistic as if you're dealing with the patient's mouth. This is the maintenance portion of your Darwin SIM. Uh, what I like about this particular system is it's very easy to maintain over uh, the course of many years. Almost every one of these places you could purchase a la carte. You know, a, a lot of times it's very simple maintenance as well. So if these screws right here are loose, then you take a Phillips screwdriver, you tighten them down. If the chin becomes loose, you take a Phillips screwdriver and you tighten it down. Those are just little things I would check here and there. You know, check a couple of the screws, you know, just wiggle some things, make sure that they're, they're in, uh, in a sturdy position. Um, your, your swivel joint here, there's virtually nothing to go wrong with it. Um, we designed it that way, so if you have any issues, let us know, but it should work perfectly well, as long as, again, you're just using these adjusting handles properly, and you're not just twisting the head left to right. Uh, you are actually using the handle and then getting a position you'd like and locking it in. So the other thing, uh, ears are replaceable. Okay, just two screws. If these break, uh, the head drops for some reason, um, then you could easily replace those. This chain here, replaceable. Um, if you choose to not use the engagement tool here, this uh, to unlock your model from the Darwin SIM, uh, what will happen over time is that eventually something will give if you keep pulling the model out and it's going to be this. 
So this ejector pin is replaceable. So um, if anything ever happens, you know, you have a, uh, take a photo, send it to us, and we'll likely nine times out of 10, we'll get you a part. But really the maintenance uh, over the course of the lifetime of this thing is very uh, easy to maintain. Uh, the knobs, the screws, all these pieces are replaceable and really they just need to tighten, uh, tighten down the quarter turn every now and again. So this is your model that you have in your student kit. If you have the standard articulator, you'll be able to see it because it'll have springs here. You'll have four screws in the back that tighten this down, that tighten the Darwin plates and secure it to the uh, articulator. And some of these features include, of course, the springs, which are stretchable and replaceable. Um, you have the Darwin plates here as well, which will engage your model into the Darwin SIM. The oral cavity cover is a polyethylene material. Okay, this is a wonderful material. It's not going to cause hand fatigue. It's very durable, but I tell you, it's going to react the same way a patient's mouth would. If you nick it with an instrument or a burr, it is going to cut. So just be mindful and treat it like you would a patient. Um, of course, it's going to collect water the same way. We clip the end here and attach it to uh, the low speed suction. Um, and of course, all these teeth are removable, replaceable. Anything on this model is, is virtually replaceable. So if you have an issue, you can give us a call. Um, but this is your model with your standard articulator and it will engage uh, perfectly fine into the Darwin SIM. This is your type on with the quick release articulator. You will notice, of course, the top and bottom Darwin plates which engage in your magnetic system. Um, you're gonna have the knobs securing those plates on here. Those can be removed, of course, but uh, or tightened back down with just a, uh, a twist of your fingers. You'll notice here the oral cavity cover, which is a polyethylene material, very forgivable, flexible, doesn't cause hand fatigue. Uh, what I like about this as well is, uh, again, that it's forgiving. But here, here's the thing, it's still gonna operate the same way a patient's mouth would. If you nick it with a burr and instrument, it will cut. So be mindful of that and treat it as though it was if you're patient. Uh, and of course, we have the uh, extension piece in the back here to hook it up to your low speed suction uh, to collect water. You open the oral cavity cover and uh, you can see where that would drain in the back as well. What I like about this particular type of with the quick release articulator is you have these adjusting knobs. So just with a quarter turn, now I'm able to get lateral and protrusive movements. Okay, so if you want to achieve group function, canine guidance, or anterior guidance, you know, if you're setting up different interferences and things like that, there's just a lot of versatility with this particular model, with this particular articulator. And then of course, when you're done, you're just gonna go ahead, tighten these wheels down, and when I'm doing that, I'm making sure I have top pressure on the upper arch and kind of upward pressure on the bottom arch just to kind of get a nice tight seal for that occlusion. And then we're all back in shape here and uh, ready to be engaged into the Darwin Sim.